Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Silver Linings Playbook, starring Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, Jackie Weaver, Chris Tucker, John Ortiz, and Julia Stiles, directed by David O. Russell. Now, I remember the slip that Jennifer Lawrence got when uh, she won the Oscar for this performance, and I remember going to theaters for this before any of that ever happened, but is it as good as I remember? Let's get into it and we'll see. Pat Solitano, played by Bradley Cooper, gets out of the hospital in Baltimore thanks to his mother Dolores, played by Jackie Weaver, and helps out his inmate Danny, played by Chris Tucker, as he wants to escape, and after eight months, Dolores wants Pat home but has no choice but to bring him back Danny to Baltimore. And as they drive home, Pat gets super obsessed with his wife turned to be ex-wife Nikki who put him in a re restraining order after a violent episode in the shower and as they get home we meet Pat Sr. played by Robert De Niro as he's a football fan and supports the Eagles while making a bet with his partner Randy of who will win the game in order to own a restaurant and Pat Sr. and Dolores say to Pat Nikki is gone as he's reading a book and has an episode at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he tells the parents as he throws a book out of the window. And I can relate with Pat Jr., let's call him for the rest of the movie, as Bradley Cooper does a terrific job with the performance. Pat Jr. goes to therapy with Dr. Patel as he hears a song by Stevie Wonder that played at their wedding, as it is a trigger of his, like Three Little Birds by Bar Marley is my trigger, as it plays when Nikki cheated on him with the history teacher, which is really sad as he hears, well, no, not hears, but tells Dr. Patel about it. Pat Jr. goes for a jog and stops by his old workplace, where I guess he got fired as Nancy overreacts hysterically when she sees him, which is a little weird and in an uncomfortable scene, sure, in my opinion. Pat Jr. visits Ronnie and he gets invited to dinner with him and his wife Veronica, played by Julia Stiles. And he comes home to call Nikki until Officer Keo, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, comes by the house to warn him to never ever go near his old house and old school and has to stay 500 feet away from both places as we move on to the night of the dinner and comes into Ronnie's and Veronica's house and gets a tour of the house and meets their new baby as and also meets Veronica's sister Tiffany played by Oscar winner for this role Jennifer Lawrence who also had a husband named Tommy but he unfortunately died for what reason she doesn't like talking about it but they're which I'm fine with, but their chemistry does come off a little awkward at first, but it grows on me as the movie progresses. And Jennifer Lawrence's performance is the best thing about the movie, in my opinion. And the dinner scene is awkward, as Pat Jr. is demanded by Tiffany to walk her home, as she tells him she knows how he feels about her at first sight, and she cries and slaps Pat Jr. because she's really distraught about how Tommy died, and that was a smart choice by not telling him as well as the audience about how Tommy died. And it doesn't really matter at this point. Like she brought it up at the dinner scene and kudos to the director David O. Russell learning about people with disabilities and having episodes of their own. Pat Jr. wants to see his wedding video and has another episode and the neighbors call them and the cops as Pat Jr. accidentally hits Dolores and Pat Sr. briefly beats up Pat Jr. And Officer Keo comes by the house and has to write a report on it while a kid with the camera comes by to film the episode, which is a well-shot scene. And this movie is well made about a man recovering from his life to try to get his life back together. Spoiler alert. Realizing he can do what he wants in his life. Or with his life, for that matter. Pat Jr. jogs by Tiffany's neighborhood, and she happens to join him while annoying the shit out of him until he loses her, and she eventually catches up to him and calls her a slut 
and she says to forgive fucker and I do agree with that as this is a smart script in my opinion Pat Jr. goes to Dr. Patel as she used the quote and Dr. Patel advises him to become friends with Tiffany and Pat Jr. goes for a jog and invites her to dinner at a diner and that night comes as it's Halloween night at the time and they get to the diner and have a nice time until Tiffany decides to help Pat Jr. give a letter to Nikki. And she decides to not help him after talking about how she got fired from her job because she fucked everyone in the office. And Pat Jr. tells Tiffany about the song that triggers him. And he thinks she's crazier than he is. And she storms out as they stop in front of the movie theater and some kids come in and after she screams, he's harassing me. And Officer Keo comes in, as well as the Stevie Wonder song. And Tiffany feels bad for him as she tries to cheer him up. And Officer Keo asks her, asks Tiffany for a drink. And she walks away, and she happens to decide to help him with the letter to Nikki after what happened at dinner. Which seems like an odd but good choice, I would say. And I do like the performances as Robert De Niro and Jackie Weaver are great in this movie. Pat Jr. is happy as he tries to deliver the letter as her parents are overprotective of her. And she hears Pat Jr. doing the right thing to some jackass who thinks he can fuck her anytime he wants. And I'm inspired by the speech Bradley Cooper said to the jackass. She wanted to do it in a return of a dancing. And she, she at first didn't want to help Pat Jr. out with the letter, but she'll do it with a uh, return of doing a dance routine at the end of the year at the Benjamin Franklin Hotel, and he reluctantly agrees and to it, and scares with, or scenes with Bla Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence are electric in every scene together. Danny lies about coming out of Baltimore while sitting on the couch with Pat Sr. And Randy and Ronnie is are there as well as Pat Jr. trying to give him advice about marriage and his brother coming in and his brother coming in comparing himself better than Pat Jr., which is fucked up, sure. And Pat Jr. says he's got nothing but love for him, which is what Danny said, and it is absolutely magnificent advice. And Officer Keel takes Danny back to Baltimore. And the scene works tremendously, as all of the scenes are working tremendously, in my opinion. Even the awkward dinner scene earlier in the movie. Pat Jr. starts dance practice with Tiffany as they stretch and dance together. And these scenes are very moving. And I do love their, her summary, the summary that Tiffany gives about The Lord of the Flies, which I never read the book, honestly, which is a great summary. Danny comes by out of the blue and helps out with the dance moving for the competition and I really like Danny in this movie as he shows up out of the blue and I love it. Pat Sr. asks Pat Jr. about helping him out with a football game as he sees it in person as the connection between Pat Jr. and Pat Sr. was absolutely beautiful. Tiffany tells Pat Jr. about the letter Nikki wrote in return as and they try to practice their dance moves and I he can't help but think about the letter which sounds like me honestly and he reads it out loud in front of Tiffany which was a powerful scene and director David O. Russell does a tremendous job on the chemistry between the characters. Pat Jr. gets to the football game with his brother and sees Dr. Patel there as well as Ronnie and and his brother of well not Ronnie but Pat Jr.'s brother Things go well until some racist motherfuckers tell the Indians to go back to their country. And Pat Jr. gets into a fight with the racist motherfuckers. And the cops arrest them all and they get out of prison and get to the house. And Tiffany comes to the house. And Pat Sr. is pissed. And Tiffany brings up excellent points about Je Pat Jr.'s non-presence during the football games. And impress Pat Sr., and then Tiffany tells Randy and Pat Sr. to bet against each other. And Pat Jr. believes it's toxic, which is, which it is, as it's also gambling, which is also toxic. 
And Pat Jr. hears Tiffany as he walks out when she when she said something like reading the signs, which is something that was in the Nikki's letter. And when it, that comes back later in the film at the end, it makes perfect sense. I'm not going to say it yet, but we'll get there. Tiffany tells Pat Sr. and Dolores that Nikki will be at the dance, and they agree to it as Pat Jr. is told as a white lie, I'll say, and months go by and we get and we go through Christmas time and we get to December 28th and Pat Jr. and Tiffany get dressed for the dancing tournament and they get there and see the dancers while Tiffany sees Nikki is with Veronica and Ronnie and she flips out as she's pissed about it as well and gets a drink and Pat Jr. finds her at a, the bar and she's been drinking quite a bit. And he gets her out to dance, and they dance pretty good until the ending where they screwed up. But they get a 5.0 out of 10 on the dance scores, while the Eagles won against the Cowboys, which is Randy's team. And they cheer because they beat Randy at the bet, and they win everything. And Pat Jr. talks with Nikki briefly, and decides he's over her, and finds and gets Tiffany as he wrote a letter to her saying he knew she wrote the letter. Is this all connecting at that one scene with the reading and the signs? Not Nikki, who, as he confesses, he has feelings for Tiffany, and they start dating after one year later, and the credits roll as the climax is beautiful, as I wish this the movie didn't end at this point, but it, at some point it has to end, so what am I saying that for? Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a... 8.3 out of 10. I really enjoy being around these characters as I didn't wish for the movie to end, and it does have to end at some point, sure, but the performances by the actors are absolutely tremendous. Even Jennifer Lawrence, who stole the movie in my opinion. Every scene was moving as their relationship grew for me throughout the movie as this movie is absolutely well made and director David O. Russell does a good job with the chemistry of all the actors including Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. I do like this movie a lot, and I'm very glad I revisited it before Amsterdam comes out, as I can relate with the characters and their problems, as it's more believable than any other movie dealing with this situation. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time we'll be back with American Hustle. And until then, good night.